everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Hope you're well. Welcome back to this week's episode. This is episode number 144, and it's a two-part episode. In part one, in this section, you'll hear a joke, learn an expression, and do some pronunciation drills. In part two, you'll hear the fun cultural story of the day, which is all about the Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby is a horse race that is often referred to as the most exciting two minutes of sports. And I'm going to talk about the culture surrounding this event. It's pretty spectacular and unique. I will, of course, also teach fun phrases and words throughout the story so that you get that cultural aspect as well as develop your English along the way. Be sure to stay tuned for part two to learn all about the Kentucky Derby. Let's go ahead and begin today's episode. And as usual, you'll hear a joke. Are you ready? What did the doctor say when the pony told him his throat was sore? Do you know? You'll be okay. You're just a little horse. (laughs) Do you get it? Well, What makes this joke funny is the wordplay on the word horse. A horse, H-O-R-S-E, as you may know, is a large four-legged animal that has a mane, so that hair on its head and down its back, a long tail, and hooves for feet. It also goes, nay, H-O-A-R-S-E, has a different meaning. Horse, H-O-A-R-S-E, is an adjective that describes a rough or harsh sound, usually someone's voice. I, how are you guys doing today? My voice is hoarse, right? So if I spend the whole day yelling, the next morning I wake up and my voice is hoarse. You might also sound hoarse if you have a sore throat. So like the pony in our joke. Let's hear the joke one more time. What did the doctor say when the pony told him his throat was sore? You'll be okay. You're just a little horse. So there's those two meanings. Yes, it's a little horse because it's a pony, which is a little horse, and his voice is hoarse. Let's move to the expression of the day, which is to jump the gun. This expression is extremely common, so let's learn how we can use it in everyday situations. We'll start by going through the definitions of each word. To jump is a verb, and generally it means to leap, to spring, or hop. However, in the expression to jump the gun, to jump means to begin too early. The, the is a definite article. We use it to talk about specific nouns that have already been discussed, or we use it when nouns are clear, as in, you know, others know what we're referring to. For example, I like the blue book, not the red one. Gun, well, a gun is a weapon that shoots bullets, BBs, or other objects. Gun control is a hot topic of conversation in the U.S. It always has been, and it probably always will be, unfortunately. The expression to jump the gun means to start something before you're supposed to, to act prematurely. The origin comes from the 20th century in track and field. Track and field is a sport, and in it there are a variety of competitions, usually involving running, 
throwing or jumping. So, for example, shot put, javelin, hammer throw, if you remember from Matilda, or maybe pole vaulting, uh, running sprints. Those are track and field events. Many track and field events are races on foot. To indicate the start of a race, an announcer will say, on your mark, get set, go. Or get ready, get set, go. And simultaneously, they'll wave a flag or shoot a gun. Maybe in the past, it was more common to shoot a gun. Now, someone who starts running before the flag is waved or before the gun is shot is said to be jumping the gun, and they would be disqualified from a race. Today, to jump the gun as an expression is used in any situation where someone acts too soon or prematurely. Let's go through some examples to see how we can use this in different contexts. Example number one. Imagine you have been working at a company for three years when finally you ask your boss for a raise. In other words, an increase in your salary. You ask for a raise. She agrees and informs you that you will get a promotion after Christmas. However, after your meeting, your boss checks out your company finances and realizes there's no money to give you a raise. She jumped the gun. She spoke too soon. She told you you'd get money and a promotion when you can't. She acted prematurely. She jumped the gun. Example number two. Imagine you're young and in love, and after three months of dating your special someone, you decide to get married. Unfortunately, two years later, you're signing divorce papers. Chances are that you and your partner might agree on one thing, and that is that you jumped the gun. You got married too soon. You got married prematurely, before you were ready, before either of you knew each other well enough. You jumped the gun. Example number three. This is a personal one. About one month ago, Lucas and I decided we want to move to a new city which is close to L.A. We got a real estate agent to look at houses with us and found the perfect place to live. We got so excited. But we were jumping the gun. In order to get that perfect house, we'd have to sell the rights to some of Lucas's songs in Brazil transfer money to the United States and get pre-approved, it was too much. By looking at houses, without having done that prep work, we were jumping the gun. We were doing everything too fast, too soon. We were rushing things. We jumped the gun. This expression is extremely useful. You can use it in so many different situations, especially those that require thoughtful decision-making. For example, you can say, I'm sorry it's taken so long to make a decision. I don't want to jump the gun and regret my choice later on. Sometimes, of course, when we do jump the gun, we have regrets. So let's not be impatient and make rash decisions. Let's go ahead and do the pronunciation exercise. We'll use the phrase, don't jump the gun. In other words, don't do something too soon without thought. Repeat after me. Don't. Don't jump. Don't jump the gun. Don't jump the gun. And the conjugation. I jumped the gun. You jumped the gun. He jumped the gun. It jumped the gun. We jumped the gun. They jumped the gun. Jumped the, jumped the, jumped the. The faster you speak, 
the shorter that ed at the end of jumped sounds, right? Jumped the, jumped the, jumped the. So that's it for the first part of this episode. Be sure to listen to part two if you want to learn about the Kentucky Derby. If you liked this episode, I would love if you could give a five-star review in your favorite podcast player. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified about upcoming episodes. And as always, if you would like to learn more with every podcast episode, check out premium content. It is designed to help you learn with this podcast. Links to that can be found in the episode notes. Hope you're having a nice day. And until next time, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.